The first thing to know about the ChatGPT API functions feature is that it doesn't execute functions. It does not have direct access to your local or remote functions. What it does do is it outputs its response in a way that's formatted ready for your functions. So you now have much more control over how you want those responses to be formatted. There's obviously official documentation, but in this video, I want to do a tutorial in Python of a very basic usage of this feature, and you can see exactly how it works. To demonstrate ChatGPT function calling, I'm gonna build up a Python script from scratch here. If this is familiar for you at first, feel free to jump ahead. I've already got my OpenAI API key stored in a separate file, a .env environment variables file. That's a hidden file and it's best practice to keep that separate from the code that we're writing. There are modules that can pull that API key out of those uh, hidden files, so that's what we're gonna do. And so right at the start, I need to import some modules and write a couple of lines of code to do that. The first modules we'll import will be OS and then from dot env load uh, import load dot env okay and then obviously we need to import the open ai module as well and obviously make sure you got those installed next we load dot env first of all load dot env and now we want to use that to pull in the api key from our hidden file and then put it into the open ai object so open ai dot api key will equal and we use from the os module get env and what do we want to get uh, well this is the name of the property where i stored my api key and i called it open ai api key maybe you used a different name uh, okay right that should work at this point it's not going to do anything but i want to make sure i'm not getting any errors so i'm going to save this and yes i'm old school i'm going to go to the terminal and run it and i don't get any errors errors good back here i prepared um some text i prepared an article actually it's the blog post where they announced the uh, ChatGPT function calling and i want to write a script that will condense that into a summary and a title um, using ChatGPT, of course, but the thing that ChatGPT will hopefully return will be a JSON object with a title property and a summary property. And that's what I've struggled with in the past, getting reliably that format. So hopefully we'll be able to do it properly this time. I want to create a variable for the article that I've got, and I've already prepared this. So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna copy and paste that in. That's the bulk of the blog post that I'm gonna use. I don't really need to see it, so I'm gonna just move it out of the way so it's not distracting. When we use the ChatGPT API, we send at a minimum a model name and an array of messages. Well, now there's a new property that we can optionally send and it's called functions. Obviously, in the function calling tutorial, we're going to use that functions property. I'm gonna set it up in advance here and then add it to the request later on. And so I'll create a variable, I'll call it functions and it's actually an array, although we're just gonna use one function this time. And the function is an object. And this is gonna have three properties. It's gonna have a name, a description, and then parameters. Now, whatever we type here doesn't affect any code on our system. It's purely telling ChatGPT about the function that we have on our system. Effectively, we're saying to ChatGPT, hey, we've got this function we want to use. We want your data please send your data in the perfect format for this function. And to do that, we need to describe the function really well for ChatGPT. So the name, let's have something, well, obviously it should be the name of your existing function, but I don't have one, I'm just making it up. So I'll say show summary. And then the, t the description uh, will be something really clear and easy for ChatGPT to understand. So shows the title and summary of some text okay good and next we want the parameters now the parameters will be the arguments for our function that ChatGPT will send to us um, but we want it to send them as an object and so the first thing we do in the parameters is actually say that we want a type object 
and then we can say what the individual parameters are and we do that by actually calling them properties and they are listed as more objects the first one I've got uh, well I want a title and a summary to put into my function in my imaginary function so I want ChatGPT to send back an object with a title and a summary those are going to be my two properties just to make it really clear to ChatGPT we actually need to say a bit more about this title so what type it is and then a description of it so yes that means one more object and we need to specify the type it's just going to be a plain string and then a description so what does this uh, property do it's well very simply title of the text output say next we do the same thing for the second property and in my case I want a summary so summary and again another object with the same type and description will be I'm a perfectionist I have to have the correct case good that is our functions uh, array ready to go it's just got one object one function in there but it's telling ChatGPT everything it needs to know about our function so it can give us hopefully a title and a summary as an object right that's the hard bit done that's really the new stuff there and everything else should be pretty familiar to you so now let's craft the request to create the request I'm going to make a bit more space here move everything out of the way so that you can see and we're going to use the OpenAI uh, object and get a response from that so let's set up a response variable and this will be the OpenAI object chat completion obviously this is in the OpenAI docs and the create method and within this we'll have the uh, required model name and messages array but in addition the new optional functions um, variable that we prepared obviously um, because it's a function calling tutorial we need to specify it usually it is optional though so the model will be uh, GPT 3.5 turbo and 0613 apparently in September 2023 this will become the um, default model, but for now we need to actually specify 0613 because that's the one with the function calling feature. Messages equals an array. And within this array, we're going to have a couple of objects uh, that will represent the prompt and the sort of the system message. In the first object, I'll put the role as the system basically telling ChatGPT you are an assistant. Uh, the content will be you are a useful assistant. I've never tried <laughs> using a different um, message there. I wonder what would happen. Anyway, for now that'll do. And the next uh, will be the role user and that's where we'll enter our prompt. So role is user and then the content here is our prompt. I'm going to start this with an F because I'm going to refer to the article variable I prepared right at the beginning. So here is an article and then curly brackets to get that article variable. Please return a title and summary. Now at the moment it's going to give us hopefully a title and summary, but we can't guarantee what format it's going to be in. And I really want a JSON format so that I can um, use it in other programs. So this is where the functions bit comes in. Alongside the model and the messages, we now add a new property functions. And this is going to be the function definition that we prepared earlier. And we just call that functions as well. So that's it. That's all we need for the request. There is one more uh, optional um, property we can use called function call and that will tell GPT either don't use any function definitions this time or you must use a function definition or it's up to you. You decide whether you want to use it or not. That's the default. Auto is the default. We can use none. I'm going to specify it here just for the sake of completeness. 
function call equals and if you want to specify functions then you have to name them in an object here so the name of the function that i'm going to use and i want you to refer to is uh, show summary i forgot the name show summary okay that's it for the request let's print out the response and cross our fingers <laughs> okay i'm going to save that and try running it in the terminal oh okay there we go okay then so we've got a bit of everything there load of stuff that we don't really need but here we can see that the thing it's returned is a, it looks like a nicely formatted object and it has indeed got a title and a summary so we can use that and probably convert that to a JSON object let's give that a try so we go back here I want to get the arguments so I don't need this print response anymore uh, let's set up an arguments variable and this will be from the response object we will get the choices array and we want well let's double check in the terminal shall we we want the first and only item in that choices array and within that we've got message function call arguments okay the first item in the array then we've got the message then we've got function call ah, wrong one. and then we've got arguments right and we should be able to convert that into a JSON object but that's just reminding me I haven't imported the JSON module so I need to go up to the top here and add that import JSON so nice and simple with Python okay good we want to convert this then using that JSON module so we will set up a new variable we'll call it JSON object and we'll use JSON to load the arguments and then we can try printing the JSON object and cross our fingers. Save, terminal, I'm going to clear this and let's run it again. Cool, um, title there, I can't see the summary but I think it's just because it's been chopped off. Uh, should be somewhere, oh there we go, yeah, 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 because I've got it off the screen. Okay, uh, and finally I'm just going to double check that I can extract that as a JSON uh, object property. So instead of printing out the whole object, let's have a go at printing just the title. And then the same thing again, print uh, summary. Right, one last time. Let's run it. Oh, I'll clear that first. Okay. Yes, there we go. Okay. So uh, up to now, I've kind of had trouble getting a reliable format from ChatGPT, but I played with this uh, and it really looks like it is very solid. They say in the documentation that they can't guarantee it's going to be in exactly the format that you want, but I think it's way, way better than what we had before. So hopefully this tutorial has helped you with ChatGPT function calling. I found it a great upgrade. It gives us so much more control now. And hopefully you've got a better idea of how it works.